Okay, so like I've been asking everybody in the roundtables that I've been at lately, uh, who's never been in a roundtable before? Okay, and, and a lot of you have been in roundtables in the previous ones just a second ago. Okay, so uh, the way a roundtable works is basically we pick a subject, and it just so happens to be PVP for this one. I think it is a little too loud. I'm hearing feedback. Um, and so we pick a subject, and we just talk amongst ourselves about that specific subject. And how's that? Is that you still hear me? Yeah. Okay. And uh, it's just for us to, you know, figure out how we want to make PvP in EVE better. What you think sucks, what you would, you know, if you have suggestions, uh, throw things at each other, you know, just throw out ideas, and we'll just chit-chat. And uh, this Mark, he's a, uh, you, you may know him in, in other incarnations, but he's yeah. got a lot of PvP experience, and uh, he's a game designer at, at CCP, and I'm uh, also a game designer at CCP, and so whoever wants to start, just... Raise your hand and we'll just chat about PvP for an hour. In the back. Who has the microphone? Oh. Yeah. Elf Vira has the microphone. <laughs> I see. <laughs> missile damage and frigates. Uh, if you're doing PvP and you're firing heavy missiles from Tech 2 launchers and you're trying to hit frigates who are doing reasonable speed, um, you can have a, a big Tech 2 cruiser with half a dozen missile launchers on it and you can't hit the damn thing. You do almost no damage to it. Very, very frustrating. Um, do, does anybody else have issues with missile damage and small ships? I'm not saying this is he was saying his guns have a hard time hitting them as well. Yeah. I, I fear missile bolts more than gun bolts because put a chopping disruptor on there, can't hit you at all. I just, uh, missiles still hurt you, so. We should really give him his own microphone. That was the guy that was talking in the factional warfare one. <laughs> yeah, and, and and the and the PVE one as well. Yeah. Yeah. You just sit up here with this one. Yes. Gun missile bolts typically have a lot of missiles. Wouldn't you? But couldn't you design some kind of module that increases the signature of a ship so that the missiles can hit it harder? Like a target. <laughs> 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 Alright, right, right, right. 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 This is going to be a fun one. Yeah. <laughs> ah, yeah, one small question. Uh, is it possible to have a module that helps jamming of missiles? Reduces missile damage? Well, theoretically, it's possible. <clears throat> but uh, also, I got to remind you guys: this is not uh, this is not a, a panel discussion where you just fire questions at us the whole time. This is like a, a roundtable discussion where you guys collaborate together and, and chat. So, just in, just in case you feel like since we're sitting in such a strange configuration for a roundtable, that but yeah, I, I was confused as well. Yeah, I, usually these things have much fewer people, but I think they just wanted to get as many people in on the discussion as possible. But yeah, I mean, we used to have defender missiles, and they're kind of crap. They don't really work at all. <laughs> they, they are crap. They're not kind of. Yeah, yeah. They're... No. Yeah. Right, my question is about, well, I fly Mimitar, so it's artillery guns. I know there's changes coming along, but, I mean, PvP... Well, the worst tracking, the worst damage used to be speed. Now that's gone. Where is it all going to be going? Or what? I mean, what would be a good idea to improve? Or have you guys already decided? Well, the guns are getting improved. Yeah, yeah. The their, um, the ammo and the guns are getting improved. I'm not sure if the forum post is is the forum post that Ivar was making up already. E CCP NOS. The one I know that he did a lot of tweaks last week. I'm not sure if he put the latest version of it up but I know that all of the ammo and the gun damage has gone up significantly, and that's why there were a lot of, oh, my God, more alpha posts up <laughs> over the last few, after the last week or so. Yeah, so I, I mean, I think, I think the changes should be on CC yeah. right now so that you can go. I'm not sure if they've hit CC yet, but okay. I, do know that, I do know that there was a concerted effort behind making uh, Mimitar more, do more volley damage back to the way that it used to be. 
So there's actually um, a reason not to train a MAR for a change. <laughs> so. Yeah, and there, there should be a, a, a forum post with pretty pictures coming very soon, if, if not already. If you on, say so. On there. Well, oh, you mean graphs? Yeah, with graphs. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Graphs. graphs. There should be graphs. There's a post with graphs, and it showed that three of the races just now are sort of equal at various ranges. Okay, yeah, so that is posted mm -hmm. then. You've seen the it. Yeah. So they're all going to be made equal. Like, it's going to be like a graph of, like, Amar at this range is this much damage. Uh, exactly right, and we've changed the amount of um, ammo. So, like the the mid range ammo was getting a like a bonus to its size, which was, you know, we decided that was lame, and so you're going to get a bit of a tracking bonus to that. So, hopefully, that smooths out the balance for those. Come on, PVPers. Yeah. Go ahead with the hat. Well, I actually love the idea of having more alpha damage with the uh, with the howitzers. So the alpha damage resolution was originally reduced because in a gate can, uh, the alpha damage from a group of waiting hours of fitted ships on ships that had just jumped that hadn't got any speed was getting ridiculous. Um, if they're getting a slightly improved tracking or whatever and doing much more alpha damage, then won't you just see the same problem return with um, a group of tempers hanging there, or uh, an apocalypse with eight. Even with a group of guns, nobody's going to fight a group of this. <laughs> I will. <laughs> how are you going to prevent that? How how are we going to prevent uh, people from grouping up and killing other people? No, no. Or <laughs> <laughs> not quite understanding the question. <laughs> I think he was he was worried about the alpha strike, right? If if we increase the alpha, you know, if we just have. I don't think he's fixing it just so we can remove it again. Yeah. Though. Yeah. Mm. And the other thing was just that the uh, since the ammo was balanced to have more damage at the long range and less at the short range, that you pretty much only fit short range ammo on your auto cannons, and that was what was making auto cannons. Such so inferior to the other short range weapons mm -hmm. in the game, so we're fixing the ammo so the curve's more. So more, more yeah, yeah, and curves as well. Here's uh, one about the PB. Why can't you, or what do you think of not being able to dock in your own space station when you've aggroed? Like if someone has put bubbles on the, on the station and you can't go out, shoot them, go back in. It's your station. Why can't you dock in your own station due to recent act of aggression? Well, you <laughs> 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 I think it's kind of stupid when you have built your own outpost and someone is attacking it and you can't have a little bit advantage while attacking, the, while, while defending. Well, you do have an advantage. They can't dock. <laughs> Not if you're aggressed. If you, if, if you go out... One minute, and you understand you can't dock at all. So. Yeah, but that if, is, you, if, if you go out... But if you go out and shoot... Everyone, start shooting. Yeah, then you have to wait for a minute. One would it be? In, in your own station. Yeah, it's because Scotty, the docking manager, doesn't want hot guns coming in. Yeah, yeah. I was just... <laughs> yeah. yeah. But it's, your, but it's, your, it's your, your, your station, so you should be able to dock in it. Yeah, but, but, but Scotty's everywhere, so... Uh, <laughs> throw him out in your or something. Yeah. <laughs> Oh no, I don't want the mic. Yeah. yeah. I just I just like sharing that. Um, oh, God. Station games are horrible. And yeah, exactly. Yeah. If anything, the, the dock timer needs increased. 60 um, seconds. 60 no. seconds easily. No. Uh, well, I mean, yeah. they didn't change it after the <laughs> <laughs> so, I knew the yeah. PvPers would be able to all yeah, agree on something. Maybe. maybe. <laughs> What if, what if you own the station, then you could set your own redocking timer for aggression? No, no, no. Beyond 60 seconds. Then, like, if someone in your alliance messes up, you know, then you're just, you're just screwed, you know? I can't think of any alliances that might do that. Can we get the mic in the, in the way back for this? In the, yeah, we can hear these guys. It's, yeah, yeah. I'm sure they can. <laughs> Sorry, one, one question says we're talking about timers. Self-destruct timers on cat missiles. Increase? Anyone? Yeah. 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 Triple. Yeah. 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 I mean, 
Once he's got the counter shot, like, he, yeah. he, he committed, you've got him, he's tackled, he's going to die. To lose that, the kill mill, to lose the red Bye, kill, kill mill! <laughs> 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 because he self-destructs. I mean, he self-destructs. No loot, loot. no record of what happened. Yeah. Okay. No do, honor. That's do you guys agree on this one? <laughs> how many people like that? Increase. <laughs> so, 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 wait. So, so is the, so is it like the bigger the ship it is, the longer it should take yeah. to self-destruct? Yeah. 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 I mean. You know, sense, I don't self-destruct my ship, so... No, I mean neither. I take it like a man. I mean, yeah. Jesus. Um, yeah. <laughs> you should have a lot of time to think about it. <laughs> I've seen characters self-destruct when you're shooting them. They're self-destruct and you don't get the medal. Yeah. So, yeah. Motherships too. So why don't you increase the timer of your aggro? Mm. Why don't you get it out? Well, this is well, Right. Right. Guys, guys, let's let's hear what this guy. The, the thing I don't is. understand is, back a few patches ago, they increased the. Uh, hit points of every ship in the game. They they wanted to do that so that you could have longer fights. Do you guys remember what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. um, they never increased <laughs> the aggression time. timer, but they increased the amount of hit points that you have. It doesn't correlate. I don't want to be able to you see where I'm coming from with that? <laughs> Look, I don't want that time to increase. The aggression timer used to be 30 seconds is one minute now, right? Mm -hmm. yeah, it's still 30. It's, still 30. Yeah. it's always been 30. If I'm jumping a gate, I want it still to 30. Docking, I don't care. Docking. Shouldn't be allowed to dock. <laughs> Shoot a gun and to dock them out. <laughs> <laughs> With a hand up. With a hand up, yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'd like to suggest a little feature on all three fights because uh, you're at the Titan, you're the jump reach up, and you're like, yeah, right, the fight's on. You got 200 and whatever red battleship in front of you, you start sniping, and there's a, there's a long list of red battleships you want to kill. So the fleet commander goes, uh, let's sort you over you by, by letters, and you start with Xerxes. It's like, how the hell does he spell it? And you, the fleet commander realized no one could find him, so he's like, it searches for an X. And then you go and, well, and you find the X, and the, then the, the, the overview reloads on how you Broadcast really well. Obviously, some people just play an empire where there's only three people on the field. It's a rough crowd. Yeah. Hi. Don't name your character. Did you hear that? No, I didn't know. Okay, what the fuck is with the broadcast of 150 clicks? I mean, every single ship can theoretically target what 250, but if the fleet commander is uh, cloaked, but more than 150, he can't broadcast the target, so... De no, cloaked it doesn't matter. If you pass 150, you can't broadcast the target. The broadcast target isn't far enough, because I can hit 220 by a no problem. Okay, that's awesome, except I don't know what I'm shooting at. If I follow my feet, I'm Okay, I mean, so I can talk to Noni about that on Monday. Okay. Because he's already looking at that. All right, we will just go ahead and fix that. Yes, How's that sound? we can actually do that. <laughs> yes. yes, TM. Yeah. I'd, uh, I'd like to open the discussion on the E-War. Now, we've had the Falcon no, balanced, which I think works quite well. But Kaldari E-War is still overpowered compared to the other forms of E-War. Now, as far as I can see, um, the Amar E-War is only vi vi uh, useful against tur uh, turret boats. But why can't it be modified to, say, affect missile guidance systems to therefore limit the amount of hits a missile can take? 
Secondly, uh, obviously sense dampeners on Galente are useless, because even on the Arazu, which is the bonus boat, it's pointless. Um, a, for a Caldari E-War boat can effectively knock out up to six ships, or you know, pretty much insta-lock. Whereas, if you're using uh, sense dampeners, for example, you need to put three on one ship to get any sort of useful uh, effect. So I feel they should be strengthened marginally. And of course, the Mimitar target painter, who uses it <laughs> unless in PVE? He uses it. So, you know, maybe, maybe that needs some, some thinking, but certainly the other two need a, a little boost to put them on an equal platform and to be used more. You never see Arazus or Lachesis in flight these days, but everyone has a Kaldari ECM boat. I don't agree with that. I think sensor damage is a good no, the da the dams got hit hard after one of those tournaments when everyone was flying Lachesis, yeah, and that, that's could we, could we perhaps make the, uh, the dampeners an area of effect thing? Would that be oh, no. You want to make jamming area of effect? No, no, not jamming. <coughs> not the jammers, the dampeners for, for oh. Galenti. Can we have a Maybe talk that you could use them to slingshot the plates? Uh, yes, but no. <laughs> how, how about webs? Uh, you know, right now, when you reduce the effectiveness of ECM on regular ships, you increased it on the ECM ships, a la the Blackbird, the Rook, the Falcon. You didn't do the same with Webbs, so the Rapier and the Hugan, it, it's not as effective as it used to be. I mean, maybe they should boost the Webbs on those two ships because I mean, there was a time when an Interceptor was afraid of those ships, and now not so much. I mean, inertia can carry someone back to a gate if you're trying to put Webbs on them. Yeah, I feel the same about that. Uh, the webs on a rapier is the same as a web on another ship, except for the distance. And it should be more velocity as well. Instead of a 60% bonus, give it a 30% bonus to range, 30% bonus to strength. I mean, something like solo PvP or something. And that makes sense. The, other, the other thing I'd like to say. The more webs slow the ships down, not have one super web. But that's not how you was designed. You have special ships. You have the inward platforms. You have, you have the bombers that put them off. And you have people in your corp that can help you. And you have to fly, and you should fly together and have more ships yeah, putting webs on targets to block it down. <coughs> and to stop my core crabs, you have scramblers. Yeah. So put a scrambler on your right side and just break our <laughs> if, if I'm flying a, a battleship with um, an ECECM on it, I should expect to have a high probability of not being jammed. However, at the current time, they're pretty much useless. You can fill up your mid slots with ECCM I and mean, you'll still get perma jammed. You know, well, yeah, but if you want to give up two or three slots for an EC, for ECCM to avoid being jammed a couple of times, but you should, if you put one, you should have a much less chance of being jammed. You don't. But you shouldn't have to. You sh it should be a good defense against being jammed. ECM yeah. Of Not in practice. Yeah. We used to fly uh, dual ECCM boats, and one Falcon would still out jam the entire fleet. With what? With with two ECCMs on a mega. <laughs> yeah. But I'm saying all I'm saying is you increase the probability of. Not you being jammed. Two on a mega, you're basically more, if not the same, as a carrier, and you know how hard a carrier is to jam. An ECCM module. It does nothing except increase your chances. It might be able to do something more, such as 
for example, reduce the cycle time that you are jammed, enable you to get out of the jam a bit quicker, even if you are jammed. It gives you some sort of non-chance-based chance -based bonus because you are dedicating a whole slot solely for the purpose of not being jammed to jam by Polkari. <laughs> so, so you want it to not only not allow you to not be jammed, but if you happen to be jammed, allow you to be unjammed quicker. It's obviously a balance issue, but I believe mm -hmm. at the moment the ECM is slightly more powerful than the ECC. So, uh, bombers. Yeah, uh, bombers. Bombers are fantastic. <laughs> yeah, until well, you watch an Oh, I knew this was coming. No, that's why bombers are fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> Twenty twenty bombs on the joke. Bombers, bombers have been useless for oh, yeah. for six months. No, no, people have been saying bombers have been useless for six months, and the first time somebody uses them effectively, everyone screams for that. Oh, I thought it was hilarious. Yeah. It was the funniest thing I've ever done. I peed my pants laughing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, so do you have a problem with them or not? I mean, they're, 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 the mix of each bomb being resistant to, to their own race is sort of a pain in the ass because you only got that one bomb. Anybody, anybody screws it up, which you sometimes do do. Hi. Yeah. 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 It's completely, it's completely the game. Bomber boost was the best thing happened to yeah. Best thing that happened to so the bomber. It's a small game TVP and the bomber boost. We're, we're taking the doomsday away and now you have these little miniature ones and they're in ships that are paper tissue thin, so it requires that. a little bit of, uh, what, um, strategy. Well, I'd like to, <laughs> to say, yeah, tactics. Um, tactics, yes. Love breaker and void bombs are worthless. Completely yeah. and utterly worthless in their current form. The void bombs will take away enough and love breakers will work on pretty much the only thing you can use them on. You can use them against capsule ships. Yeah, but you could use log breakers on siege dreads, it would be, um, it would cause a big issue for them, because obviously a dread takes six and a half weeks to lock anything, so you take this lock, Maybe more. It's, it's a big, big, uh, nerf down, a big, uh, mm -hmm. mega thing. Mm -hmm. Do defenders affect bombs? No. They don't affect missiles. <laughs> Speaking of the bombers. Ouch. Damn. <laughs> Speaking of the bombers, um, could we make um, bombers in the same gang who are cloaked be able to see each other, or would that be too easy? So you don't decloak each other when you go in? I think. No. Oh, the be able to see each other no, or not they, decloak they, each they, other? Which? The, be able to see each other while you're cloaked. So, no, so you don't decloak each other. other. So you can align around the game. Maybe you can have a direct line of communication thing that can talk to each other. I think. Is, is I the, think is the issue you want to see each other, or you just want to not decloak each other? Both. Okay, because because seeing seeing each other is like completely com seeing each other is actually completely technically impossible. Because when you're cloaked, your your ship is completely removed, like from the game entirely. There's no way for anyone to hack or find out where you are because you are just not there anymore. So we couldn't do a thing where you're you could see each other because then there would be ways to like. Packet sniff and, and whatever and figure out where you were and cheaters would come along and we hate them. So, uh, but having some sort of way that two cloaked ships don't decloak each other is maybe more possible. But I am no programmer, so I'm gonna have to defer to like like a technical would, dude. Would later, it be not right now? So. Would it be possible for the uh, the gang links, you know, broadcast shields and stuff like that, to maybe have another module? It's, it's like a slight sonar ping or something for the other ECM ships. The thing is, it's, it is hard to develop good tactics if you're trying to do the stealthy bomb run thing without, okay, it's really hard to, for point of reference. I'm, you know, 10 degrees off this or, or I'm, I'm, you know, south of this, this, you know, point here and I'm above the horizon on this and whatnot. Mm -hmm. um, so it may be something like that. If there's any way not to do it so that, uh, it interferes with other game mechanics, but if you're in a stealth fleet, maybe have an, an extra option to, if you have stealth modules within just that fleet, be able to so, do it. So something that works more like a real-life target painter where you're saying, like, shoot all your bombs at this point in space. Is that No, no, no. Uh, well, that, that might be interesting, too. But Smart basically, I'm, I'm still talking about <laughs> a stealth ship. Stealth ships and stealth fleets should be able to identify one another because it's if if you put if you got any amount of stealth bombers and you have to be within x amount of uh you know distance to any given target it makes it very difficult to not either a bump into each other 
or you know, B, make sure that you're lining up and going to be able to warp off at the same same type of thing. Just a good bomber formation okay, possibility. But, so the formation would be one thing, but the not decloaking each other is a major sort of thing that you're right. trying to. Right, that's, not not decloaking. That okay. that would be nice, but um, and maybe that is more important than being able to see each other. I mean, sometimes it helps to see each other so that you're launching bombs in the same direction and you can you can warp off or what right. have you. Yeah, because formations is another thing that I really want to have that I've wanted forever, and it's just never made it onto like the top of the list and mm -hmm. made that made the cut into an expansion. But I mean, I think there's so many things we could do with formations, and you know, just from the sense of of tactics and also just different ways in change the gameplay. That I would really love to also have formations, but you know, yeah, that's just really cool to be able to walk the fleet there in formation. So. Yeah. Yes. So that that's of that's <laughs> in, uh, exactly. It was already in my head. Yeah. But that's that's that sort of thing is the formations are something that they've that's been going around around for a while now, which is exactly what we're seeing. When you warp in, you'd warp in with like your tacklers out in front and the battleships at a certain range, and then it just all come in all at the same time, and you could do. You know whatever you wanted to do. It's yeah, yeah. definitely something we want to yeah. do and very we, badly. We'd even been working on it a little bit, yeah. and then just you know, other things took priority. Yeah, I would like to say something about <coughs> not decloaking each other in stealth bombers. Mm -hmm. okay. Isn't that so, some of the charm with the stealth bomber to actually be good enough in a team to not get close enough to each other to not decloak when you go, go doing a bombing round? That gets skills are important not just skills on the character but skills in game that's why i like that we can decloak each other because you need skills and try to think where your partner are even though we can't see him yeah but oh, so the one thing is if if you gang warp cloaked and you land you'd really have no idea where your gang mates are or your fleet mates sorry i'm old school yeah um, but so you know how it's it's not even really player skill dictating that you're not hitting your buddies because you've just you know, gang warped in, and now you're all invisible. So, I mean, uh, I have a question about uh, cloaking. Just uh, cloaking in general. Um, you have a manticore. Can just you stand up, whoever you are? Cause no, he's I'm he's next to the camera. I'm here. He's just there. Oh, oh. Okay. <laughs> I'm short. I know. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, about cloaking in general, uh, you have a frigate who fits a cloak. Uh, it cloaks, and anything that gets within 2.5 kilometers of the ship itself uh, decloaks the ship. I mean, frigates are what, 100 meters in di diameter or something, and then you have a battleship that cloaks, say a, uh, uh, yeah. You, you want, the, you want the, the cloaking field to scale to the size of the ship? Uh, yeah, kind of. I mean, it's a bit stupid to have a 100-meter ship decloak because something gets in range of some uh, of a distance that is 25 times the actual ship. Too complex or too little. I'm sorry if there was supposed to be like a mod, wasn't there? That like a kind of like a pulse uncloak, mm. like a smart bomb or something like around the it's radius. A, it's, it's been in the code forever, but yeah, yeah. yeah. Not, not uncloaking the ship, metro cloaking, but the other ships that just fit with the clothes. Well, uncloak ships. Okay, well, I know that um, one of the things that we have wanted to look into is more tools to, like, uh, find cloak ships, um, and specifically because of the fact that you can sit in a system for, like, hours and hours and hours cloaked, and, you know, people don't... And local don't, and, and local and just... Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Um, and um, there's a lot of... there's. We've we've been considering counters to cloaking. We've considered looking at the cloaking devices themselves. Um, adding fuel to the cloak, adding, maybe. Yes, mm -hmm. adding fuel to cloaks based upon like maybe mass. So like, if you want to cloak your Titan, it will suck up a lot of gas compared to something smaller. And um, yeah, and. Don't put the black yeah. ops guys that work out the, the No, no, I mean, for like, not, not for like, I mean, obviously covert ops and things like that would be, would get a, a bit of a pass and something like this, but like, um, things like the cloaking, size of the cloaking field and everything else like that is definitely something that we could look at in conjunction with these other things. But it's definitely stuff that we want to take a look at. Uh, one uh, little question, quick one. Uh, tech three ships and overloading heating. Uh, you get heating bonus on the sweaty cheek, cheek cruiser. Again, can't get a subsystem that adds heat and a scale. 
Do they stack or do we get a, you know, kind of less, get like a dense one? Mm -hmm. You can overheat for a long time. Yeah, no, but I mean, do I get 66% or get, do I get 75? Test it. Yeah, I mean, I would have to look at the. I, I have, I, I don't have that up here. Yeah, I don't know. I think it stacks though. Just one. But, okay. <laughs> and the hat. One other question about PCM though. There's two kinds of PCM modules. What's the question? Is it really broken? Uh, single frame, and there's a mixed module that is activated. Why don't we make a mixed module, for instance, make it possible to? Instead of boosting your sensor strength, keep a single one for every module you've got active. You mean make your current lock un unbreakable? Make your current lock un unbreakable. I'm going to defer this to you. <laughs> well, med slot. Do you guys think that would be imbalanced? You guys who are loving your overpowered ECM? That sounds like a really good idea. You are our That would require a lot more coordination between the ECM troops as well. It's a lot more coordination. Yeah. I don't know. Because that one target that we'll be keeping That's all you need. <laughs> Hopefully, they have more than one. ETM is always primary, so if, if uh, you take away the power to completely break it, I think it'll be all fine. Personally, I like what I said just before, that you'd be quicker coming back online. And so also, uh, it's just not going off my If you're going to die with one ECM ship and one other ship, then the German, he still has to, has to lock on the second ship to the other ECM ship to be useless. If you try to jam him, that guy still has a lock on you and can, can kill the other ship. The ECM is completely useless. Unless you make the module like that fitting it hurts, like 100 CPU or something like that. Yeah, we're, okay, the, the, go, for, go ahead with the mic. Uh, so, um, the scanner delay, do you think it's broken? The, the, like, the directional scanner delay? Yeah. Uh, I, I think it was a necessary evil, and uh, it, was, it was just killing the server, and so now it's like we can lower it down to one second point three, and, and it's just basically, it, it, wasn't like a, it wasn't a balancing decision. It was, it was the guys running the server going, there's this query that you are running a lot. Uh, can we lower, can we make that like once every 10 seconds? And I was like, oh, huh, huh. <laughs> Yeah, and I was like, no, 10, no, no, how? So it has actually helped server performance. Hmm. Oh yeah, it, it's an, an incredible amount. It's, it's and like, And 1.3 is where? the solution? <laughs> where, where does it help? It, it, it helped on the CPU and the and the like hitting the database. Did you tell them you were gonna have a You can't spam it. Did you have the Marine Forces ever? Mm -hmm. not. And what? We've had, we've had eight hundred people in the system that was it was a plan up C because there was a C. Uh mod module would yell on on P speak. Modules to manual, modules to manual. Even the jammers man, we had the manual would do that stuff. How could we fix that by the way? You're you're asking game designers really technical questions. <laughs> I mean, no, I mean to be honest, we we yeah. we make we design systems and then really smart people go and make them happen. Yeah, that's how it works. Yes, that's true. F one, F two, F three, what? what? Working. Get a new keyboard? Yeah, call. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, 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 well played. The scanner, I understand why it's performance, but it really makes it difficult to find someone, which would seem valid, but as a possible solution, couldn't you try to find someone and it just takes some time to narrow them? Well, I mean, how quickly, how quickly are you people changing and, and pushing the button? It takes you, like... 0.2 seconds, like, move, 
Like, you seriously, like, 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 if you can do it within 10 seconds, you can get a 5 degree scale within 10 seconds. Yeah. Yeah. And you're trying to find, if you have like 30 belts or something in a system and you're bouncing between groups, you can... Yeah. But is the problem also sort of with the UI doesn't really tell you exactly no, when I you're... I would love that if there was a countdown or if the bottom grayed out until you could use it again. Cause yeah. you, uh, uh, Are you getting rid of the pop-up box along with the 1.3? And then hand that again, and it's well. That's the way long because I think a lot of reason people got so upset about it is that the UI is terrible because the button is still lit, and then when you click it, you get a pop up instead of graying the button until you can scan it. Right. Okay. So we are we are trying to address that as well because we've been getting a lot of hate from. from <laughs> no, I mean seriously. So so the the guys showed me these graphs and like see how this makes us like have our killing servers stuff happen and if we would just change this to one second it would make everything roses and I was like okay go ahead and then yeah then then the massive 111 billion page you know thread of hate came, came on the massive thread on and and so you know we looked into well if if the UI was better then it wouldn't be so bad so we are looking at the UI and Trying to fix that aspect. Don't feel bad. If half of the peers are not hating you, you're not doing your job right. Okay. Yeah, I agree with that. Actually. Yeah, slowed down finding people, though. Is that was that your intention? Like significantly slowed down finding anyone? It, no, I mean it honestly wasn't really a game design choice. It was a, it was a technical it's, it's you could just, limitation. Like, you just on say, the... I want to find this. I want to look. I want to find it. Have it narrow itself so it can say, oh, I know the the server can say he's 360 degrees, but it'll take a few seconds to narrow down for you in one query for time. You could still a similar effect you used to have when you did it manually mm -hmm. about the server load. That's still yeah. removing a lot of the manual skill from it. Yeah. The manual yeah. skill is really Yeah, I like the manual yeah. skill as well, personally. There, there were some people around the office who wanted to just remove the directional scanner when we added the, yeah. the new scanning system. Wow. And, and I know, yeah. I know. We, yeah. we were both yeah. fought that, to keep that, it. That, that, there, was a, there was a, you know, there were less... In the old days, we the... used to do this shit without any of this fancy crap. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 There's a... Guy in the back who's has hands. Yeah, I'm just interested to know whether or not anybody else hates the combat probing system as much as I do. Um, I mean, it takes maybe f five to ten minutes to probe somebody down using the. Yeah, <laughs> it takes me that long. <laughs> do, but do people, does everybody else find it really easy to probe people down? Yeah. Or is it just me? Yeah, he does. Other okay. yeah. takes, if you're good at it, it makes you have a rough idea where he is. Head to spread out across the system. Yeah. Yeah. If they're going to log off, spread out. The right character. You know, oh, he's around this planet. And get your probe there right away. You can get him before he can get and the pod again before they will get up. It's not that people log off us. But with the, with the new system, it is impossible to get someone who is moving safe. If you, oh, yeah. if you move stays every 30 seconds, it is absolutely impossible to get to you because it takes the probe a more time to move its fucking probes than it does take you to well, walk to a new safe spot. And, and, and when you walk and you make a new safe spot, and you don't move the probes. You move the probes to a place where you know he's been, and when he comes in, you see him, he bangs once. Well, that's why they won't reuse safes. Yeah, exactly. You don't reuse safes. Well, not everybody does that. So, no, but when you're talking about how to catch the idiot, we're talking about the smart people being completely impossible to catch. Now, modification of the probe system, is it possible to have an option to have the probes auto automatically arrange themselves so you have all of the So you don't have to do this. So it'll be faster to, you know, there is spot inside the probes with 100% chance I'll find something. We just move that whole mass over there and make them find it. Yeah. Yeah. Formations. Yeah. Yeah. It seems... Yeah. I mean, yeah. you've got four or six probes out. Why can't they tolerate the range? So you definitely have an area that's 100% proof. Find something. Yeah, it's a valid, valid uh, point. Or even oh, the possibility of once you've arranged the probes, once you've arranged the probes now, you can move all of them. You can scale all of them. I know that. Now, that's what I said. You can move all your probes. You can scale the uh, scannable area of all your probes. Why not add the possibility of scaling your probe formation, making all the probes move further away apart from each other or tighter together? That will also help. Okay. Once, once you're not probing, you put your probes in a kind of cross or whatever. Like towards the ortho or whatever. And you just could, and as you have, you once you are tightening your circle, you always need to move them closer to each other. If you could do that automatically. Yeah, we're...
Is it not in yet that they all scale as a? No, okay, because that's yeah, I've I've seen actually, this on the, yeah. on someone's screen at work. Yeah. So and sometimes I don't know if it's on TQ yet. But yeah, so yeah, when you when you have them all here and you scale them and they go like this, but yeah. you want them to go like this. Exactly. Yeah, we've got that internally. So it's going to be out on TQ like. How about this guy? Just give this everything thing. Yeah. Uh, on top of that one, uh, depending on how many resources you have in your corporation and in, as, a, as a character, um, it's really nice to have that function where you can save um, setups where it takes it from the, the hangar. But having a container where you could save your, your stuff that you use for your setups, specific for that purpose, rather than having a buy-up order coming into that saying, hang on, but everything is messed up and you do not really have no idea. You yeah, we we actually talked about that, yeah. like loadout packages. That yeah. you, just like a container for your loadout, and then you would just mm -hmm. instead of all your all your loot that you managed to get after the battle, you know, all that crap is just sitting all in your hangar. You know, wait, did I fly this? Is that is that my mates? And I had this before. Mm -hmm. You know, people were thinking about eight nine thousand things in the hangar. But uh, another thing related to like saving out your overview settings is we've been talking about just saving all those settings on the server. So no matter what, when you Reinstall, or you go on some other thing. It's it just there automatically. You can make it like Pokemon. Yeah, you can. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. the only issue we have because if you're having a laptop, you're running on, and you have a stash of it, and then you have a different setup on it. Okay, yeah. Yeah, you, you, you might have a two of them. Okay. Kind of along the same lines as that. Uh, the saving overview settings. I mean, now we can share ship. Fit ups, you know, with with our court mates. Do you like um, that feature? It's awesome. It's awesome um, because you know, as as nice as some of our friends might be, they're idiots, and you need to help them. <laughs> um, and it, I think the same goes for overview settings. It would be nice for an FC to be able to say, "All right, everybody, switch to this overview." You know, and mm -hmm. everybody has the same overview name, same overview setting, and and because I mean. Sometimes there's language boundaries, sometimes there's other reasons why somebody can't get it set up the same way as everyone else, mm -hmm. but more often than not, it's just because they're idiots. And so, I mean, we love them to death, they're good at putting, you know, ammo on target, but other than that, you know, they, they can't fix their own overview. Yeah. Um, does anybody else feel the same way about shared overview settings? You can kind of already do that. You just export it. You can originally make it download it, leave it in, and then you can yeah, but I mean, it's not quite as user friendly as dragging a fitting into chat and saying, make your overview look like this. You know, so. <laughs> yeah. It also doesn't save all your overview, it doesn't save the ordering. When you guys decided that we should see columns yellow instead of a word target, mm -hmm. by default, I, we tried to, you know, for your players here, take this overview setting, and then we realized that it doesn't, it saves only part of the overview and not your ordering of, you know, Color this instead of this. Yeah. Yeah, our columns, or it's only like part of it. Yeah, we admit we're we're not perfect. No. Oh yeah. No always said it. Personalized views. Last parts. Wouldn't that be nice? Outlaw status now overrides alliance status. Yeah. You can fix that. We can fix it better. There have been some blue on blue, you know. That's been the thing. I mean, you on dock in the station and see some red flashing motherfucker, and you're like, you're <laughs> like, he's not shooting me. What the fuck? You need to relax, dude. <laughs> <laughs> no. How are we doing on time? We've got about ten minutes left or so. FYI. Who has? He has the mic again. I've got the mic, so I win. Um, <laughs> Uh, can I talk about the uh, tactical overlay? Um, it kind of hasn't... Well, I think it's really useful sometimes, but it could do with a few little extra things. I think it'd be really nice if 
Um, frigates had a different icon if you were doing that, and battleships maybe, so you could kind of see yeah. uh, without okay. having to hover. Your I mouse. know exactly where you're going with this, uh, um, might. and that's uh, basically the whole combat UI. Mm -hmm. um, we have uh, we have one guy in the office that it's literally been his dream for the past year or so to basically take the combat UI and and rip it apart and and rebuild it again because like uh, like I mean just out of curiosity how many people in here actually use the tactical overlay? <laughs> wow. Um, okay. They're going to be pleased when it's improved. Then. Yeah. Really. <laughs> okay. Um, and what, uh, obviously, one of the thing, one of the things that we want to we want to do is we want to try to make it more intuitive, which would entail things just like what you're saying is like make you know symbols. You know, it's not just one a, a square and a bigger square and oh a really big square. You know, it's like you would have. You know, we we've actually talked about having like you know it'd be a lot more like you know like when you see like in the movies the guys with the big things on the on the board and like this unit is here and stuff like that. You'd actually have like maybe it'd be an oval or a rectangle or a triangle or something for different types of ships. And so we are uh, we are definitely wanting to take if if we do something like that, it's not going to be just a little tweak. It would be like a full revamp of the whole UI. And it's and it's and it's it would be a it would be a fairly major feature. Yeah. But it is it's something that we have talked about and that we do we do want to do. Mm -hmm. I think right now the main use of the whole streak interface is pre-orientation. It gives you a plane so you can easily see what's above and below you mm -hmm. and relative position. I think right now that's its main function for most people. Beyond that, it doesn't do a great deal. Mm -hmm. Right, and we want it to do much more. Yeah, Yeah, it's purely an orientation tool, so you can tell what's going on in the space around you what about without it. What? What about prepping the game for 3D? What? As in the 3D dimension of the SLI. Oh, oh, you to be in All right. What? Uh, can? What do you mean? You want the game to be in 3D? I'm. I'm <laughs> have you seen a game in 3D? So, have you tried a game in 3D? <laughs> okay, you're paying that that is a chore. Oh, you mean like 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 watching Final Destination type 3D? No. No, I haven't done that before. <laughs> no. There's <laughs> about three people who've done it in the whole world, so I wouldn't feel bad. Okay. I played one at a at a expo, a game like developer. You have the virtual boy in your office. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That's true. It's not um, like fake though. Yeah. So yeah, we've got a couple minutes left, and I've actually got someone sending me messages that they need to talk to me right now. So. The, the, all these people need to talk. I know. To that's what I told them. I'm like, <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, Go ahead. <clears throat> <laughs> the next presentation. Go. Um, yeah, my uh, next question is, uh, does anyone else hate drone controls? Yes. Oh, yes. 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 We could have uh, <laughs> a, you know, one of the function buttons, if we could actually make a function button, or even if it's a control F1 or something like that, yeah. that we can we can tell the drones to attack. Because, I mean, you, all you the drones would be like, uh, yeah. 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 Yeah.
and then Drake or something like that. Okay. Um, I don't know if any. Okay. I don't know if any if the if the uh, fleet finder term has come up. If any of you guys have seen some of that on in uh, on CC. The Fleet Finder is, is a, uh, it's a feature that we're going to have in Dominion, um, and it's, uh, it's the bare bones of it at first is going to be basically along the lines of if you're in an alliance, you know how like you have to do the current thing where you like right click and you know you post the fleet invitation in an alliance and all that, well that's going to probably go away and be replaced with um, more of a generic little neocom button when you click on it and it pops up and it shows all the open uh, fleets within your alliance. And if you're a fleet commander, what you can do is when you create your fleet, you can name it wherever you want to, and, you know, penises and whatever, you know, it doesn't matter. But you can, but you can name the, you can name the fleet whatever you want to, and then you can set permissions at the very beginning. Do you want it to be an open fleet? Do you want it to be an invite-only fleet? Do you want it to be a fleet that you can delegate someone else to invite to, that sort of thing? So, in terms of being able to find a fleet and you know understand maybe what it's about, you'll be able to at least set the name of it at, at the very, at the bare minimum right now. And um, activity as well. Yes, and, and what it's doing. Um, now this is this is going to be this is this is going to be like the the first version of this, but in the future something like what you know you're describing where um, it might be avail information might be available to people with certain corp roles or alliance roles. You'd be able to like right click on a fleet within the fleet finder and get a list of exactly what ships are in those fleet or is in that fleet. But you know that means you have to be very careful with permissions and stuff which I'm sure everybody here does. <laughs> and um, so, yeah. Sure. Yeah, well, that, that's, that's, that's the whole point, is that the fleet command, when the fleet commander, even, even in the current version, when the fleet commander sets it up, he will, he'll have the ability to delegate certain tasks within it. And, and the entire fleet system is, is something is, I mean, this is, this is the first step in kind of doing a bit of a revamp of that system as well and making sure, because there are things, uh, there are things within um, the current gang window that don't make, the, that don't make a lot of sense. You know, there's functionalities in there that only apply to like this, like if you're broadcasting this, or you're asking for that, it only goes to like certain people within your squad or certain people within this wing or maybe only like the fleet boss or the fleet commander and it flows up and there's no context, there's no understanding of exactly what some of these different things do. And that's another thing that we want to try to eliminate is we want to try to make it a bit more intuitive and, and, and let you understand exactly what some of these different options are for. And so yeah. Does that mean that sometime in the future we can go to you for assigning certain gang slots to certain ships? You can only take this gang slot if you are in an interceptor, because this is my title. There's nothing out there's nothing planned for that right now, but I Yeah, well, but nothing really that, preventing us yeah. from well, the, well, the original <clears throat> person who brought this up was talking about is the fact that if the fleet commander, or squad commander, or wing commander, or even in the entire fleet, can not only just see your name in the gang window or the fleet window, he can see your name and the ship type. Mm -hmm. That would immediately help yeah. FCs to see. Because you can name your squad. So you can name tackle wing, battleship wing, capsule wing, and then you have squads, whatever. You can name your squads, whatever, mm -hmm. so people sort of know where the ship goes. But you have no way for the FC to check if people are reading and yeah. going where they should go. So mm -hmm. if, if, if it was possible just to display name and ship type, you can mm -hmm. immediately see that idiot in the tempest in the tapping room. <laughs> <laughs> So, so if like if, if like as part of if, if as part of like the fleet finder, the the fleet boss or someone with a delegated role Just could could see, the, could see the ship types, and then he could like no, you go here. It doesn't need to be that. It could be simply for everybody. Mm -hmm. I don't think that yeah, would be or a permission yeah. setting, basically. Yeah. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. probably something. I mean, it's yeah, it sounds really doable. Yeah. Yeah. extremely yes. doable. Just adding uh, ship type with name. About to build on that, I'm going to jump to from your current location. Might not, that might add too much complexity to it, but mm -hmm. that, that's good information. Yeah. So, yeah. We will go back and so this the interesting thing about the Fleet Finder is it's sort of a it's it wasn't an official feature of Dominion. It's like a feature that we all wanted and we've sort of been working in our spare time to get in yeah. because we we love this feature and and so we've got like artists and QA and programmers and stuff working on the weekends fiddling with this thing because we all think it was so cool, but it never really got that high priority against all the other yeah. big features. We've actually got like 
one of the lead programmers just he decided that this is too cool we must save it and so that's why we're getting the basic version that we're getting in now but yeah. you know but once we, we will iterate on it once it yes, is in game yes yes right now you, you can add people to a watch list but you can only add 10 so if you're in a group of 18 and you have three guardians yeah the watch list is the watch list is going to get bigger yes I, that did, that is i talked to them. Yeah, uh, I have like two minutes to be to my next thing, and I have to call someone on the phone, so I gotta cut you guys short. Yeah, Thanks so much. We're for ready to start it's, the next it one. It was great minute. to see you and yeah. see you at the show.